Alrighty guys, we are on stage here with CZM from Team UFX. Um, he just finished his group stages of the Team Deathmatch tournament and we are moving into the, uh, the playoffs and brackets. So uh, as you can see, or not, as you cannot see right now, we are looking at uh, Ice Climbers versus UFX and uh, Salivating Monsters versus Ballers. That is your final uh, stages here for the TDM tournament. So uh, CZM, we'll go ahead and start off with the TDM. Um, as far as the group stages go, y'all didn't really have a uh, quote unquote tough match until this last one up against um, Salvating Monsters. Can you kind of go through uh, the first, you know, the first uh, three rounds of that and just kind of your, your mentality as, as far as the team went? Yeah, so as you said, Salvating Monsters, they're a strong pickup team consisting of some of the best players in Europe that have been kind of practicing together pretty constantly for about a month now. So we look at, uh, we look at their practice record, they've done about they, th they played pretty closely with Ice Climbers. We really wanted to win the game because we wanted to avoid playing Ice Climbers immediately in the next round. And yeah, I mean, how did the game go? So we won our map pick Purgatory. Pretty close game. Uh, good control of the weapons and the power-ups by us for the most part. CPM4, uh, we lost uh, pretty close. They built a 20 frag or so lead at some point and kind of held it throughout the most, th most of the rest of the game. Then it came down to the last map where it really could have gone either way, at least halfway through it. I think we made a couple crucial power mistakes. We failed to attack the battle suit a few times, and that kind of cost it for us. But, yeah, we saw where we stood in that map, because we actually haven't been able to play a real team on that map uh, ever, because none of the teams in the United States want to yeah. play it because they haven't learned it. So it's kind of nice to play an actual team on Tornado for once, and that was one. Yeah, there were, there were definitely some really good games, and uh, that was the last match you all just saw, guys. Um, and it was a three mapper. It was it was probably the toughest game y'all had, or it was the toughest game y'all had in the group stages. Um, so moving on into the playoffs, um, y'all are going up against Ice Climbers, which you said you know if, if you won that match you would have avoided. But um, now that you're here, mindset on that and as far as the team goes, yeah, it's the same as the last match. Yeah. I mean we're, we're clearly the underdogs, but you know. Yeah, it, it did land y'all the four seed. Um, I mean it's not. I mean it's a 14 bracket, but it, these are definitely the top four teams. I think we we uh, we kind of expected this. I think most people did. Um, and yeah, Ice Climbers being, being the number one team in the world right now, they uh, just came off the DreamHack win. Um, and it, like I said uh, in a few interviews beforehand, we, um, we've seen them pretty much dominate the entire TDM scene in the world for uh, the past decade almost. And um, you know, a few player switches here and there, uh, but definitely a really strong, strong lineup that they've got. Y'all have uh, one of the stronger lineups as well. And I, I'm pretty sure y'all have a lot of confidence going into this. It, it should be a really good game. Um, and uh, I guess that might be the first game that goes on air. But uh, y'all will definitely see the, uh, the TDM tournament and uh, that match as well as the other match, which is Salivating Monsters vs. Ballers. Um, but before we head off, I did want to uh, recap on Duel a little bit from yesterday. Um, as far, we'll, we'll go ahead and skip the group stages and we'll, we'll get right into the, uh, the playoffs of what happened. So basically, <coughs> first round, Sparty. All right. Now, you came in as the 12th seed. Um, Sparty is... Knowing the damage he did last year, what what was what were your thoughts going up against that maybe first round? Yeah, I mean Sparty's been one of the top guys around for a while. You know, placing second a couple of years ago at QuakeCon, fourth at IM. I I've played him twice since I started playing Quake Live at uh, IM and at DreamHack. At IM we actually played a really close match that, uh, you know, he won two one, but the first game I could have won, I lost in overtime. Second game I won, and then the third game he won pretty easily. Played again at DreamHack in Sweden, and that time I think he beat me pretty handily. Uh, you know, I went into it knowing that I probably could win if I played well, but that it would be a, a real battle, like it wouldn't be a decisive win most likely, it would more probably be a, uh, a close one. And, you know, I mean, that, that, that third deciding map, I got an 11-2 lead with four minutes to go, and I tried my best to hold on to it somewhat poorly, and he... With about four more seconds, or even maybe two more seconds, he could have conceivably come back and tied it up, sent it into overtime. So I, I was happy to win that one. That was Arrow Walk, right? That was Arrow Walk. Okay. Right, right as that match ended, I threw my headphones off across <laughs> the room, and I lost my glasses. They flew off into, this, into the crowd somewhere. But that, that was probably one of the most epic matches I think we saw. And that was that was the third map of, of y'all's uh, series there. And, um, yeah, it, it really came down to if, if you didn't If you weren't right next to that teleporter, and you didn't have that 25 right next to the teleporter, I, I think it would have... Definitely we could have gone his way, but it's, it was definitely a clutch pullout that you had. Um, and in the next round, you went up against the Hang, and in the next round after that, once you, uh, you, you beat the Hang, once, uh, it's another it was another three mapper as well. Yeah, another uh, yeah. extremely tough match. I mean, I think he won the first map on T7. That, that was, again, a pretty close one. That uh, I mean, I was down 3-2 with a couple minutes left, and so 
that was a map that he was very heavily favored on, so I felt good about that. And then I, I won my map pick pretty comfortably. And then the third map, again, he got a, he got a good lead, but uh, I basically ran the map and hit everything in all the fights. And yeah. And they the were good games as well, man. And like I said, it was a pleasure to watch, but then you had to move in the next round and go up against Rafa, which yep. arguably the uh, best Quick Live player um, to ever play the game. And um, Dehang and Rafa being your, your teammates on UFX, which is, you know, it's, it's pretty crazy how that happens, you know, two rounds in a row. Um, but you were unable to pull this one out. They were, they were still really good games. The first map I remember was, was the first map or second map? The first really map close. was, uh, I mean, I pulled it to a, he got set up 6-0, I pulled it to 1-6. And then I kind of messed up a, a plasma jump to a health bubble. And oh, it cost yeah. me some that's right, that's crucial seconds, right. prevented me from getting the mega again. Yeah. And then that put us in equal footing okay. and basically shut me out. Yeah. The airwalk game, you know, I lost it kind of close, kind of messed up, got nervous, aimed really bad in some fights. Uh, I mean, it was 12-9 with two minutes left and just didn't hit the correct shots. And then he hit some crazy shots. So, you know, you, I mean, I mean, I mean, I. I I'm not obviously disappointed about that, yeah. but I did win some really close games against Sparty and DeHang, so... I mean, it's kind of like, you know, they're, they're pretty close matchups. No one's winning decisively, Yeah. so... And uh, that, that, set, that loss did set you up with a, uh, a bronze medal match with, uh, with Cooler. That's, yeah. uh... <laughs> how, how, you, how you feeling about Cooler? Um... I've been happier to play him for first, but... Yeah, that's true. Definitely. Seeing that we both lost, you know, I guess I'll settle for the bronze match. And I mean, how do, how do you feel about Strengths too? And I just, now I've interviewed Strengths a few times throughout the event. Uh, and he is in the Grand Finals with Rafa. I mean, have you g gotten a chance to watch any of his play and how consistent he's been playing? Uh, he plays. Uh, I haven't watched him play. I just played a couple games against him, just messing around. Yeah. Uh, I think he plays pretty well. If he can keep his emotions in check, he should be good. That's true. And uh, yeah, y'all did see the streams last night as well as uh, this morning. As far as TDM goes, Strengths has been on his game. Um, and if his aim is there, I, I'm pretty sure we should see a really, really good series between him and Rafa, and um, as well as you and Cooler. Those should be some very, very good games, and I believe it's uh, best three out of five, right? And the bronze uh, as well? I believe so, yes. Okay, yes. so we're looking for some awesome games, guys. This is uh, this is CZM. It's been a pleasure talking with you, sir, and um, we will head into the playoffs of the TDM tournament, guys, so heads up for uh, UFX versus Ice Climbers and Ballers versus Salvating Monsters. Thank you.